I'm really happy to be able to play this game once more. I have played this game through many, many years ago, and uh, it is one of my favorite games of all time. And it's also actually one of the first games that I played on the PC. This game was produced by Sirtec. Uh, in uh, 1994, so it's uh, it's almost 20 years old now, and uh, I think that uh, most younger players uh, probably have heard about this game, but uh, most of them probably haven't tried this one th for themselves. But uh, it is really a classic game, and uh, everyone should try it at some point in their life. Uh, I think that most people that uh, enjoy tactical uh, squad-based uh, uh, strategy games have probably played its sequel, Jacket Alliance 2, but uh, uh, the first one is probably quite unfamiliar, especially for the younger players. And. Uh, when I went to YouTube and tried to search for Let's Play videos about this game, I was quite surprised, because uh, there aren't really that many Let's Play videos about Jacket Alliance, and uh, the ones that are there are either incomplete, or they have, uh, uh, for instance, the German version of the game, instead of the English version. and. Uh, this is why I think that uh, this uh, Let's Play series, that is going to be my first one, is going to be a nice addition to the YouTube uh, uh, Let's Play catalog. So, without further ado, let's start a new game. This is my daughter, Brenda. We're grateful to see you here. I'm going to make this as brief as possible. Lucas Santino has turned this island into our own private piece of hell. He was a member of Brenda's research team when the medical benefits of the fallow sap were discovered. It was a breakthrough that held hope for thousands of sick children. But it presented the need for new research. The trees can only be found on this island. And to the best of our knowledge, they do not reproduce. Presently, there is not enough to supply everyone who needs the medicine. Unfortunately, we can supply very few. Brenda was focusing her research on determining a method of reproduction. But four months ago, an extensive fire burned her research facilities to the ground. All of my scientific journals and data were destroyed. I felt I was close, but without them, I was forced to start over. When we rebuilt, Lucas persuaded me that he should have his own facility on the other side of the island. He convinced my father that two independent research centers would have a better chance at reproducing the trees. I did it against my daughter's better judgment. It was a grave mistake. Within weeks, Santino had his own people on the island. Some of our employees were forcibly prevented from harvesting the fallow sap. 
Others have turned up dead. Now Santino has us pinned, and nobody can leave the compound. We must have access to the trees. Yes, we must return to business as usual. We need you to contact the same organization you spoke of. You must decide our course of action and see to it that as many trees as possible are harvested until we regain control of this island. We'll pay you some of the money you'll need up front and the rest daily based on the amount of sap the workers are able to harvest and process. It won't be easy. The island heat is brutal and Lucas Santino is a very determined man. I have bad news, Dr. Santino. A helicopter has landed in the Richards compound. How many men? One. You are sure of this? Yeah. Should we kill him? No. Find out who he is. Then, kill him. Okay. So that was the opening demo. And what we learned from it was essentially that uh, there is a small island somewhere on the Pacific Ocean and uh, there on this island grows a very special kind of tree and uh, from the sap of this tree researchers have found some kind of uh, utilities that it can be used to create medicine and uh, that's why this island has become so valuable in the eyes of many interest groups. And now, you, the player, or rather us, the players, have been hired to uh, uh, essentially secure these uh, SAP reserves of this island. And uh, our oppo uh, main opponent is Lucas Santino, who is uh, this very scheming kind of uh, researcher who wants to get this uh, valuable resource all for himself. And, and he is willing to do ever anything to uh, get his wish. And uh, in this game, the uh, sap works as uh, essentially the main resource that you collect and uh, that gives you money that you can use to hire more mercenaries and, uh, and uh, guards and uh, tappers that can collect more of the sap. But uh, uh, more about that maybe when we start the game. I'm going to play this uh, let's play on harder difficulty. I have never actually played this game on the harder difficulty and uh, from uh, what I have uh, what I have learned this harder difficulty is really quite hard. Uh, you start with less amount of money and uh, there are much more enemies and uh, they're much tougher. Their AI is better than in uh, the easier difficulty settings and uh, overall it's, it's going to be a really tough challenge. In addition to playing with the harder difficulty I'm also not going to use the same uh, this uh, autosave uh, uh, quick save feature of the game at all. Or rather I will be quick saving the game but only to be able to secure my, my progress and uh, in case of, uh, for instance, some kind of uh, bug or crash happening, I will then be able to uh, refresh uh, and uh, save save my game. And uh, but I I will not be loading the game at all. And uh, as a result, I'm not certain whether I will be able to finish this game. But I will try my best to be able to uh, go as far as I can. And uh, I, 
will reserve the right to uh, load this game in few instances. For instance, if uh, if there is some kind of uh, uh, some kind of bug, or if there is some kind of a other mechanical problem, or rather a problem that uh, I can do nothing about. For instance, if I uh, do a misclick, and uh, as a result, uh, my my uh, team gets killed because of this misclick. In uh, cases like this, I will reload the game. But if uh, if I make a rational decision, and as a result, my team gets wiped out, I will not be loading the game. And also, if my mercenaries uh, step on a mine or do some other things like that, that is part of the game, then I will not not be loading the game. So, let's start a new game. And uh, I will take the chance to quick save at any time, but only to be able to uh, secure my my progress in case of uh, in case of uh, some kind of bug or something. So, this is your cozy room where you can plan your next moves and strategies uh, uh, when your mercenaries are not on the mission. And uh, there are different kinds of features here on this, uh, this room. This is your calendar that uh, functions as a save game and restore game function. So you can see your selected uh, uh, difficulty level, and uh, here's the door where you can uh, leave the game. Here's the bed where you can go to sleep when you you uh, have done all the things that you want to do before starting the next day. Here's the control panel where you can change settings, subtitles, shadows, uh, music sound effects, but I think that these are all right. And finally, here is your your computer that you can use to conduct the AIM organization. And uh, we can take a look at what, what it looks like. So, here is the AIM. And uh, here you can from these arrows you can browse through different mercenaries. And uh, here you can see a uh, uh, very general kind of uh, description of the mercenary in question. And uh, here you can see the different statistics of the mercenary. And uh, when you click on the picture of the mercenary, you can contact him like that. Give me some time to evaluate you. I'm not familiar with your work. And this kind of replies you get quite often in the beginning of the game. Because uh, you're essentially a newbie in, uh, in the mercenary business. And uh, these mercenaries have never heard of you. And they don't know which uh, they don't know who you are essentially. And uh, uh, as a result, they don't want to work work for you unless you have you prove yourself first. And uh, that's why first we have to hire less experienced mercenaries that are willing to take the risk with you. So we can go through some of these mercenaries. Uh, one of the guys who you should really hire when you 
start the game because uh, he's going to be a really really effective mercenary. Хорошо. Я буду работать на тебя, проклятый капиталист. As any, and, yet, and as you can see, he only speaks Russian, which makes for some really really interesting gameplay moments when uh, Ivan is uh, talking in Russian to you in a combat situation and you don't know what, what he necessarily means. So it's very very interesting to have him around. So let's look at who else we could pick for our team. Since we are playing on the hard, harder difficulty, uh, we have very limited amount of cash. And uh, this uh, salary amount that you see here is the salary that we pay for this uh, mercenary for this uh, mercenary every day. So uh, uh, when when you think about it, uh, this fifteen thousand really isn't that much. Maybe we can hire a couple of mercenaries. And uh, we can keep them for a couple of days with this kind of uh, funding. But uh, if we want to, if we want to really uh, be able to finance our project for more than a couple of days, we have to get some way of uh, getting more more money. And that's where this uh, uh, sap, this medicinal sap from the trees, comes in. And uh, well, when we get uh, get to the map, I can speak more about the trees. Fidel is another excellent mercenary, but I'm hesitating, hesitating a little bit uh, because uh, he is kind of expensive uh, to start with. He's an um, expert in uh, explosives, one of the best mercenaries in, in the field of explosives in uh, Jagged Alliance. And he's also very good at marksmanship, so he's very good mercenary also. So, uh, let's take some other people first and think more about whether we take him or not. Miles Williams. He is uh, one of my personal favorites. He's uh, not very expensive, he's very good at marksmanship, and all of his other stats are also very good. So, uh, I usually take him with me uh, from the get-go, and uh, I think that I'm going to do so. Show, sure, dude! I'm itching, I'm due, and I'm ready. We're going to be needing some mechanical expert as well at some point, but uh, during the first day, we don't really need need a mechanical expert because we don't have any equipment that we need to repair, and uh, also. Uh, there aren't too many doors that are locked that would need to be picked. And uh, later on, we will definitely hire a mechanical expert, but uh, at the moment we don't. It's, it's not mandatory, we don't need, need a mechanical expert. Hitman is also one of my favorite uh, mercenaries in the game, but uh, as he willingly tells you, he's not interested at the moment. Mm, I don't know, Ace. Give me some time to think about it. You could speed things along by showing me what you can do over the next couple of days. Yeah, we will try to show you just what we can do. Okay. Gladly work for someone as respected as you. And then we can maybe take one more. Fidel would be a good choice, but 
bit, I'm thinking about maybe a little bit cheaper alternative to Fiddle at the moment. And we don't also need an explosive expert just yet. Maybe we will hire Fidel in the second or third day, but not, not on the first day. very much. Okay, and that's about it for now. So we can exit the AI. And every time we hire more mercenaries, we have to pay 1,000 in the helicopter, helicopter fee. Okay, so now we can go to sleep. Mercenaries and they will be arriving to Metavira at the beginning of the next day. We suffered a serious setback. Sometime this morning, someone managed to get into the processing plant and steal an essential piece of equipment. Without the micropurifier, we're shut down. We have to get it back as soon as possible. Until then, there's no point in tapping any trees. So, as Jack told us here, uh, a micropurifier, a very essential part of our uh, SAP uh, manufacturing uh, tool, uh, process, has been uh, stolen. And our first priority at the moment is to retrieve it back. And um, uh, it is. I, I. It has been so long time since the last time I played this game, so I don't really remember at uh, which sector this uh, micro purifier is. I think it's uh, one of these uh, three sectors. And uh, so we are going to try to take these three sectors. Day. And if we are able to take all three, I will be very, very pleased because this harder difficulty is quite very, very hard. And uh, here we can see our project balance. Here is what we get from one tree, so it's uh, 500 dollars. And here, this um, these uh, green dots here are the uh, trees that we can currently harvest, but because of we don't have the micro purifiers, we cannot put any any workers to work these uh, trees to get money. So when we get the micro purifier, then we can also start uh, gaining some uh, some money from these uh, these trees that we have. So uh, when we go to go to hostile sectors that are these. Uh, darker sectors here. Uh, we have to destroy all the enemy forces in the sectors and uh, that way we can gain control of them. And uh, <coughs> yeah, this is the map of the game. It's not quite as large as the map of uh, Jagged Alliance 2, but I think that it's still very, very there's a lot of things to do and uh, there's a lot of different kinds of sectors to explore and uh, there's going to be hell of a battle to gain full control over this uh, island of Metabira. So, let's go look at our team. Here we can see uh, stats of uh, our mercenaries. And after each day, we go through each mercenary and uh, their abilities improved. This is one of the role-playing elements of the game, and which I really like about this game. Okay, and uh, we can take a look at the uh, character inventories. 
Here is Ivan's inventory. There are some equipment that he has uh, <coughs> with him. For instance, a combat knife in perfect condition. Ivan is a very good uh, mercenary using uh, these uh, close combat uh, weapons, and therefore uh, we are going to equip him with this uh, combat knife. And also, he will be needing some ammunition for his mitten weapon. Three boxes of 38 ammo. And Ivan also has a grenade, and which is very nice, especially during the earlier days. Uh, and uh, of course, when we explore more sectors, we will gain more, uh, more better equipment and also more grenades. But uh, Ivan is one of the first characters that uh, has grenade with him. So I think that he's also worth uh, hiring because of uh, that reason. Okay, and here is Isis inventory. We have to equip him with a backpack so that he can carry more items when we go explore the sectors. And Isis also has this uh, kind of uh, glasses that improves his vision. Sun goggles in perfect condition. First aid kits. These two first aid kits, and we will also equip her with the backpack. Okay, now Hector. He also has a combat knife, and we can put another backpack for him. And some more bullets. Also, we can maybe take some of these canteens with us because uh, mercenaries will lose stamina during missions. And uh, you can you can uh, uh, gain uh, this stamina back by just uh, letting time pass, but uh, it is uh, it's a better way to drink some water, and uh, that way they can gain stamina back much faster. Okay, so I think that now we have our team ready. are on duty, so that means that they are going to go to the daily mission, they are going to go to combat. And here are some of the other things that you can order your mercenaries to do while, your, uh, while the day is uh, progressing. You can for instance rest, which resumes some of uh, the lost hit points, or you can train different things, for instance marching shape or Mechanical explosives, medical or physical abilities. And other things that you can do is that you can order your your medic to uh, work as a doctor and uh, improve the health of uh, some other mercenaries that have uh, gotten damaged during missions. And uh, the mercenary can also be a patient, of course. In which case uh, he just heals himself with the help of the doctor. The mercenary can also uh, repair items if he has a high mechanical skill, and uh, this will be very very useful in the future when uh, we are going to uh, recover some uh, better weapons, for instance, that are not in very good condition. And also one factor that you have to take into consideration in this game is that weapons will get jammed very easily. And, and this is also one, one uh, thing why this uh, repair feature is so important. You have to really keep your weapons in good condition to be able to have any chance of defeating the enemy. And you can also fire your mercenary. Uh, we're not going to be firing Ivan anytime soon, since he's an uh, awesome mercenary. <laughs> so, let's put him back on duty. And, uh, I think our team is ready. Yeah, so, we will put our team on 
this, this sector that we own. This is the only sector that we own. So now our team is ready to get in action. So let's get to work. Take care and we will see you again.